Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. I was having a conversation the other day with a close friend and business partner who you know, has gone through and kind of reached a certain milestone in his progression and was looking for kind of the next thing to do in his life and you know, leveling up his goals and his ambitions, etc. And we were discussing, I guess what I would call edges, things that you can do in the world today to give yourself an edge on the path to success. And there are four of these that I kind of mentioned to him. And I figured I would share with you as an interesting way to just give yourself an edge in your success journey. This is basically kind of like a business career financial success edge, I would say. And some of these you may say are not for you. That's fine. I mean, by all means, these are not things that you have to do or something. But when I look at what is the trajectory of the world, I think these are things that if you care, it's kind of like you have to invest in yourself and you want to start investing in yourself before you need those skills in order to get there. So these are particular things that uh, I'm working on for me. I've been working on for a number of years and you know, so I'm a little bit biased. I would love to hear yours. What are the things that you think, let's just think about it from the standpoint of skills, positioning, uh, et cetera, that will give you an edge in life, in success, in business, et cetera. Uh, if you do them, put them in the comments below. We can share them with each other. I would love to hear what yours are and we will dive in and talk about mine. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. Thank you for your support and assistance. I'm glad to have you here. If you would like help with customized holistic international solutions for yourself or your business, that is what we can help you with here. This is everything from the strategy side of figuring out what is best for you, as well as having our team implement it for you. So figuring out global tax optimization, where to relocate, uh, getting second citizenships, passports, residencies, golden visas, uh, banking, company formations, etc. We can help you with all that kind of stuff. Please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below or send a message through offshorecitizen.net. Okay. So uh, the first of these uh, that is something that uh, I have benefited from, clearly you will you know, relate to this as soon as I mention it to you in terms of you can see that I benefit from it. Uh, and it's something that I'm uh, very interested in doubling down on in a big way uh, over the next couple of years is personal branding. I really resisted personal branding for a very long time. I naturally am not a self promoter. I really like, I dislike this thing. Uh, you know, there's a certain like cringiness uh, of it to me. But on the other hand, I look at the people and I kind of admire them who are great self-promoters because I do understand that it's got a big payoff. Um, I heard recently the comment that, you know, fame is the most leveraged form of marketing. This has certainly got a lot of truth to it. And so, so I resisted doing any sort of personal branding type stuff for a long time uh, because I didn't feel comfortable being in the spotlight. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be uh, recognized or something, all this kind of stuff. Uh, lots of you know, doubts and fears and stuff like that. What I tell people today, which I think is really true, is that success is really hard, okay? Like doing anything exceptionally well, uh, rising to the top of some field or a high level in some field is really hard. Building things is really hard. Becoming financially successful is really hard. And because of this, you don't want to put barriers between yourself and your objective. You want to basically stack as many probabilities in your favor as possible. And so one of those happens to be personal branding. It's just got an enormous payoff. So something that I'm going to work on quite a bit over the next while is kind of upping my game in this regard. Uh, we can see, you know, one of the most classic examples of it right now is Kim Kardashian recently started a private equity firm, basically being able to leverage her brand and her following into doing investments. I think it's super smart. There's a bunch of people who are speculating that kind of over time you're going to have the erosion of traditional brands and being just replaced by these big, uh, big personal brands. You see like Mr. Beast launching this burger company. I think 100,000 people or something showed up the first day. Like just unbelievable how insane this is. But it's, you know, the result of building this personal brand and this following, etc. So just a really, really leveraged thing to do. And I think it's uh, smart for people to do it. Uh, especially in a world where the scarce resources is uh, attention. And so if you can get attention, boom, great, awesome. Number two, uh, what I was suggesting was uh, relocate yourself physically. So 
I have obviously done this uh, around the world in a bunch of different places. Obviously, this is something we help people with. There's a certain amount of bias there. But one of the things that uh, I was just having lunch with some friends in Toronto recently, and they were from Alberta, where I'm originally from in Canada, and we were having a conversation. I mentioned that, you know, I never knew how bad the environment was for me until I left. And this isn't to say that it's a bad place, by the way. You know, I have lots of good friends there. There's like, a, it was a great place to grow up. There's like, it's not that. It's that for my goals, that environment was not a supportive environment to getting there. Uh, it has to do with mindset. It has to do with uh, lack of uh, plurality in terms of industry. It has to do with access to capital. It has to, like a whole bunch of different things. And this friend had been in a similar situation. He has a vertical farming company, uh, although they actually kind of pivoted. But anyway, uh, I remember talking to him when they were raising their first major round of capital. And he ended up not being able to raise the money there. I can't remember what they were raising, $10 million or something and ended up relocating to Toronto as a result where he's been since then. And he was really like, yeah, absolutely. You know, like raising the same money in California, it's like a done deal. Raising that money in Alberta, extraordinarily difficult. So changing your environment and going to some place that that environment is really supportive of what you want to achieve, I think is super, super, super important. And it varies from person to person, depending on what they're looking for. If you're in the movie industry, you know, it probably helps to be in a place where you're around people who are creating film and are talented and working on this and developing the areas that you're not. If you're in, you know, uh, tech, then that's different as well. If you're in, you know, I don't know, something to do with finance, you probably want to be in New York or London or whatever, right? Like, figure out what that environment is for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be certain things. I mean, a good example with respect to finance is Warren Buffett. Uh, ended up basically leaving New York and being in Omaha and was a very successful investor. But the difference was the investing itself was not the key thing. If he was trying to build like an investment fund and raise capital and things like that, it would have been much more difficult in Omaha than in New York. So very, very important to change your location now. Obviously for me, uh, that's Dubai. And I think that I have a perspective I might be wrong about, but kind of what I'm observing is all the people who are going to Dubai I think it's kind of, in a sense, be like a new Silicon Valley. And so hopefully that will pay off and be true. Uh, but, you know, just depending on what your, your industry is, your target, et cetera, be willing to relocate to someplace better. You can also see this with taxes, right? If they're taking half of what you earn every year, it makes it a lot more difficult to get ahead. Way, way more challenging. Uh, and there's lots of different ways that could happen aside from taxes, right? Maybe there's corruption. Maybe it's, you know, rent-seeking behavior. Maybe it's regulations. Maybe it's whatever. But go to the place that's going to support what it is that you do. Number three follows out of that. Circle of people. Uh, work, make, start networking with and build a circle of people who are, it's kind of supportive, but it's also, you know, they are, do, they are builders. They are people out there doing things in the world. Uh, cultivating resources, making things happen, etc. Both because their ambition and activity will have a motivational component on you, uh, but also you're going to be able to cross-pollinate resources, you're going to be able to cross-pollinate ideas, etc. And you just don't know where those opportunities are going to come from. So building up that network, very important. Again, some people, you know, maybe they say, oh, you know, I'm kind of antisocial, I'm, you know, maybe in, an introvert, I don't really like to meet people. I kind of, I really don't have a lot of sympathy for that. It's like, suck it up. You know, you either are willing to pay the price for what it is that you want or you're not. And I think it's just, again, like such an advantage to have those relationships versus not having those relationships. And so do you want to put yourself in an advantage in a game that's already hard or do you want to try and stack the advantages in your favor? Number four is uh, maybe a little bit more controversial because it narrows down a particular area. I mean, personal branding does to some extent as well, but it narrows down a particular area of uh, what you might engage with, but that is learn about technology. So for me, this insight came, uh, kind of some background. So my dad is a ham radio operator and uh, microwave tech was kind of one of his uh, careers when I was growing up. And so I was always exposed to electronics and technology. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money, so hence, you know, I had a Commodore 64 when, you know, my friends were getting Super Nintendos and all this other stuff. Um, but I at least had exposure to and I enjoyed, probably partially because, you know, I related to my dad uh, engaging with technology. 
And so early on, I learned like some basic C and Visual Basic and things like this. Uh, when kind of the internet was new, I learned some basic HTML. And I, more at a time, I thought I was going to be a programmer. That was going to be my thing. Uh, I ended up dropping that uh, probably around junior high school and looking at some other directions. But at a certain stage, I think it was really in 2018, that I had this like very much kind of just clear realization. I said, look, there's never going to be less software in the world than there is today. And what this means is if I'm in a situation where I'm going up against a competitor and they understand how to build software and I don't, they're going to eat my lunch because there's going to be more AI, there's going to be more automation, there's going to be on and on and on, right? It's just the reality that you're going to have more technology and technology is going to be an increasing component of your success in almost any field. Maybe it's something to do with video editing, Maybe it's something to do with you know, actually building stuff, 3D printing. Uh, maybe it's something to do with genetics. Maybe, you know, whatever, right? But understanding technology, understanding building technology in particular, uh, I think is such a key advantage. And it doesn't mean you have to be the person who's building it. Uh, I'm building like a super complex software right now. It's like a very long, like intense project. And I like hire developers to do it. So, you know, they're the ones who are actually doing the coding. But I've engaged myself enough into understanding it that I can have a fairly deep technical conversation with them. And I can discuss, you know, database structures and I can make decisions uh, that I understand, you know, how do you do various aspects of maybe design patterns and software, uh, different things to do with performance optimizations and code and, you know, finding out how to have fewer bugs and like stuff like this to try and optimize the software building process. And software is just one form of technology. It doesn't have to be software. Uh, there's a really cool thing. If you go and check on YouTube, this guy built this squirrel obstacle course. It's super cool, right? He's got a, a great channel. There's lots of, lots of things, but I, he offers courses. And I think a lot of this stuff I don't really understand, right? How is it that he makes it that when the squirrel steps on the thing, it catapults the squirrel? You know, this is not something that I'm used to. So, oh, maybe I'd like to go take his little course and learn. And you, you, what you find is that you can pick up a lot of value with relatively little time input. And so I think that just has, has a major payoff and I would recommend it to anyone. So those are my four uh, for kind of looking at the world that we're in today and you know, how to position yourself well for the future. Very generic, so hopefully applicable to everybody. And let me know what yours are and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.